great to see y'all. I, I look forward to uh, getting to know all of y'all in person, but for right now, howdy, everybody. <laughs> Coach, uh, how has the offense progressed in these first few practices? Well, um, I think the first thing that we're trying to do is is build the culture, and that's kind of been the theme since I've gotten here, not just from me. Obviously, that starts with Coach Aranda, and we're trying to uh, develop the kind of culture and identity that is a winning culture and one that will um, – that will that will give us the results that we want on the field regardless of a number of different circumstances who's playing quarterback or who's injured or what the weather is or what our covid status is so we're trying to you know build that culture first and develop some mental toughness and resiliency and i think even before we started spring ball we made a lot of progress in the two months preceding that our our strength staff did an amazing job really pushing our guys in the weight room and and in all the all the running and conditioning drills they were doing. Um, we've had three practices thus far, and I would say three things. I think we have talent here. We have a long way to go before where we'd like to be. We will get there. And so those are kind of three different steps, and, and they, they work together because um, if you don't have some talent, then, you know, you're working uphill, and, and you're probably not going to – get what you want but we do we do have talent and and a little bit more at some positions other rather than others but that'll continue to to show itself one thing that i really like is i think we have competition at a number of positions um and obviously everybody's most interested in the quarterback position and you know i'll just say out front that i'm pleased with what i'm seeing from all of those guys right now um and i think all of them have talent and are at the right place but we also have um, competition at the right guard spot, and we have competition at tight end and at the slot receiver and at running back. So I'm pleased with the fact that we have competition because competition makes everyone better. Um, but we do have we do have a long way to go until we're until we're ready to play a game and and to play at the level that that all of us want to. But myself and, and our staff are, are committed to doing whatever it takes to get them where, where they need to be, and they'll get there. Getting to know these coaches, and I know you had some previous relationships, but actually hitting the field with them and being around the players, what's that been like, and how much does that advance the relationship, you know, actually being out there and doing what you love? Yeah, it's been great, you know, and it started it started when we all first started working together. Um and and began to build that relationship and that's important what you're asking and i know you're asking the question because you recognize uh its importance um, but our ability to work together and create a cohesive unit within within our coaching staff um, is important and and if we have that within our room within the offensive staff room then that will carry on to the players if there's if there are units working against each other or or different agendas working at hand, then we'll never get where we want to go. Um, and then the question you're alluding to is how did it feel to get out on the field? Great, you know, and I'm seeing these guys interacting with their players and beginning to see the benefits of the, the relationships that we've began to build, but certainly still have a, a ways to go with that before we're ready to play some games. So you obviously had it. You weren't here last year, but not having the spring, weren't able to install the offense. How valuable are these practices for you trying to install this offense? Yeah, it, it's huge. I, I I have a hard time imagining what it would be like to start a season with a new offense not having had the spring because not only does the spring prep you for the fall, the spring prepares you for the summer. And so it gives those guys the opportunity to go into the summer understanding the general um, idea of the offense, understanding the plays, and then being able to work them on their own and practice in here. If you don't have that, then obviously you're way, way, way behind and you're losing so much time. Uh, we lost most of our spring at BYU last year, but that was my third year there. It was different, right? And so, yeah, it, it's critical. This time is critical in, in terms of building our team. And again, starts with building the, the culture and the identity. And I, th I think we're, we're beginning to understand what that is. And now we got to put it into practice. In terms of, in terms of the you know, playbook. I mean, will it will it be full 
full bore by the end of the spring, or will you still be start kind of bringing that out in the stages? Yeah, we'll, we won't get it all in the spring and, and probably won't get it all even this year. You know, this season will probably not be the version that you see the next season or the year after that. Certainly year three at BYU is a little bit different than year one and year two. And part of that is getting to know our, our talent here, uh, but part of it is how much these guys can absorb and execute in a short amount of time. And so um, I would say we'll probably get 70 to 75 percent of the offense in during the spring and when i say the offense i'm saying all of it and then probably another 10 percent or so during fall camp and then a little bit left over for whenever you need that little nugget for a particular game plan or maybe it doesn't show up until next spring or next fall i don't know yet I don't know yet. Too early to say. I think we have some talent there, but whether we have a guy that we can count on to, to make those plays and whether that'll be a guy that we'll really try to feature in those moments or not, yet to be determined. Connor Galvin uh, was really ecstatic about just the way things have started off and, and the relationships that are being built. He also said the wide zone, the wide zone, the wide zone. Can you explain just the concept of the wide zone, why it's what you guys are going to be doing and, and kind of the effect of it? Yeah, so the wide zone is something that I believe in. And for me, I, I'm, I'm blessed in that I've been in a, in a lot of different offensive systems. The wide zone play is one that's really probably been the most consistent play in the NFL for the last uh, 20 to 30 years, 20, 25 years, somewhere in there. Um, and there are reasons for that some of which are it, it is a play that, that's very versatile. You can, you can use it with a number of different formations and personnel groups. Um, it's something that's very consistent. It allows you to hopefully stay on schedule. It's a play that shouldn't allow for a lot of negative yardage plays, and so it keeps you on schedule as an offense and as a play caller. And it's something that I think as long as you have guys who are coachable and athletic, you don't, have, you don't necessarily have to have um, a guy who can just completely dominate a uh, three technique in the B gap or a zero nose guard or a running back that runs a, a four three forty. You have to have guys who can move their feet, who can play coach, who can be coachable and who can play fast. And so they don't, they don't have to be any sp specific skill set other than coachable and willing to execute the play. And, um, it's something that I've really become a believer in, and, and it fits with a lot of the things that I like in the in the passing game as well. So it'll be something we'll hang our hat on. You mentioned the TVs. You like what you've seen from them. Do you anticipate naming a starter by the end of the spring, or could that go even in the fall camp? Yeah, that's a good question, and it could go either way. Yeah, and I, I'm a guy who enjoys competition. I think – I think the cream really does rise to the top. And if there is someone who has asserted himself, then, then I think there is some value in saying this is our guy going into the summer and he establishes a little bit different level of credibility with his teammates, I think. But if that's not the case, and in most cases I've found when there's a real competition, it's usually not the case for someone to be that far ahead of the others at the end of spring, because especially when you're installing a new offense, because we have 15 practices, but then they have the entire summer and all of fall camp to try to make that even more evident. So I would say there's probably just as good a likelihood or more that it would go longer than that somewhere into fall camp. But if it's, if it's obvious, then we'll certainly name someone. When you come in and, and want to establish your philosophy offensively, does, does that adapt or does that change based on personnel? And, and you know, do you feel like you have the personnel to, to really do what you want to do on offense? You already? Yeah, I think um, I think it's a combination of both. But first, we'll start with with this system, and I think this system is versatile enough that we can take advantage of the skill set that we have, and so. Um, there was one year in particular at BYU that I played with a lot of 12 personnel, uh, two tight ends and two receivers on the field. Um, uh, another year we didn't have that, so we played in more 11 personnel. And, and either work, um, and I think it gives us the opportunity to get our best guys on the field and um, 
you know, like the question earlier about our tight ends, you know, if there's a tight end that can be a great threat in the red zone and can go up and high point the ball, then great. But if not, then we'll let a receiver do that or maybe even a running back. And so I think the system is versatile enough that it allows us to work within the system to find the skill sets of those players without having to reach outside of it and do something different. And so we'll run the plays that we're going to run and we've got the formations and, and shifts and motions already set. And then we'll use the pieces of that that fit the personnel best. Going back to the quarterbacks, are, what are the, I guess, intangibles, maybe physically, but also internally, that you're looking to identify in a, in a starting quarterback? I think a guy's got that thing that everybody feels when he walks up, you know, and I think often you feel it when a guy walks to the mic, you know, he steps up to the mic and you can go, yeah, that, that guy's got it. You know, I kind of feel it from him. You know, it's that, it's that internal confidence. Um, it's that, um, it's that competitive spirit and toughness that you just feel this guy's going to get the job done. And he's not just going to get the job done, but he's going to inspire others to do their job at an even higher level as well. Some guys have a little bit more of that second thing, that outward leadership than others do. In an ideal world, you have both. You have a guy that has that that inner confidence and, and resiliency and a natural leadership about him that just brings guys along with them. Other guys, you have to try to teach them how to develop that leadership component a little bit more. But it starts with, with his own personal confidence and, and toughness. And if he's got that, then we can, we can and enough arm talent, obviously, then we can, we can work with the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got good. another one of those we can we can grab. Your former guy saw his pro day. He added uh, the... uh, that guy. That guy is he's he's an alien. He's not human. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, you a basketball fan? Um, I, I enjoy March Madness. Yeah. Okay. Is it, was it kind of like uh, maybe on campus? Is there an energy that you feel at all just with the men and the women doing what they're doing? All the spring sports are active right now. Or I think there's still... certainly an energy that we all feel. To be honest with you, I haven't been on campus much. I'm yeah. I'm kind of between that building right there, this building right here, and my little apartment that's about a half a mile from here. That's that's my circle right now uh, for this period of time. But um, yeah, we're certainly all excited about it. And Coach Aranda mentioned it to our guys and. Excited to, to watch uh, both our, our men and women play. All right. You got it. <laughs> so, Ben, are you a full expert in the wide zone now after three practices? Or mm -hmm. is it still taking a little time? No, nah, it's taking time, but we're starting to get the hang of it. You know, we were used to run wide zone with the last two staffs, and it's just kind of we're running it smarter and better, and it's just better for us. So I think we're learning it a little, a little better too, so. What is it like for you as a player that last year you had success and with, with the, you know, the old coaching staff and then coming in with a whole new coaching staff and, and trying to catch their eye? What has that mindset been like for you? Uh, for me, it's just taking it one day at a time, you know, competing against the rest of the guys. You know, nothing's guaranteed. So if I come out here and compete every day, especially show off to the coaches, show what I have, that's all I can do. <laughs> What's been your impression of, of Coach Grimes and how, how he runs practices and, and the other uh, you know, additions as well, if you want to mention them, but just kind of how would you describe you know, the tempo and kind of the energy around Coach Grimes? Well, energy is good. He brings it, too. It's awesome. He has, like, a lot of energy. He has a lot of confidence, and he instills it in us. So not only in the tight end room, but the whole offense. We're all we've, – we've tried to bring more of an energy intent to practice, and it's starting to show. People are starting to come out here with a better intent. It's, become more fun. Is the role of the tight end any different in this offense? Or? Uh, yes and no. It has its perks. And different route concepts, different run plays, different ways to do things. So yes and no. Did you go back and look at like, how he utilized some of the tight ends at BYU? And, and, and some of them had some pretty good success. Yeah, no, we've definitely gone back and we've watched some of that stuff. Um, but it's all about if you can do it. If you can do it, you're going to be on the field. If you can't, you're not. So there's a big emphasis on doing things right and doing them the right way and executing it. The last couple of years, Charlie's come in as, as the guy, kind of the unquestioned leader at quarterback. Is, is there a different feel at all with, with uh, more of a wide open competition here this year, this spring? Yeah, there is. You can feel it. I mean, all the quarterbacks are fighting for a spot. You know, no one's guaranteed anything. So it's fun to actually come out here every single day and see who's going to be playing, see who's going to be your quarterback for the day or 
what the rotation is, and you can see the competitiveness between them too. I watch some film with them sometimes, and it's just fun to watch them talk and compete and get after it because all of them want each other to get better. So it's a really cool thing to watch right now. You've spent the last couple months obviously kind of learning the system with a pen and paper. How has that translated over to the field now? Uh, at the end of the day, it's just football, I think. Don't overthink it. Uh, I mean, every, every system is going to be a little different. You just got to find a way to adapt. Did you rock the mustache last fall, or is that new? No, I liked so uh, my freshman spring. I did it, and it looked disgusting. <laughs> so then we did it. Uh, we didn't have spring ball last year, so I didn't have a chance to do it. So I'm doing it again, and why not? So the absence of spring ball last year has been brought up a ton of times, but what's, what's it like for you to have a couple practices under your belt, have this time, like how... How important is that for you to, to be able to be out here? It feels good. I mean, spring ball is, in my opinion, essential to having a good team in the fall. I feel like we didn't really get that opportunity to come together as a team last year. And I feel like this spring ball is going to help us compete better. It's going to give us a, a better edge. And it's just going to make us a better team. And I feel like at the end of this, we're going to be glad or we're going to be happy about what's going on here. Coach Aranda said that he's probably spent less time on football as far as the offseason up to this point than ever before. A lot of it's about building relationships. How much farther along do you think the program is as far as cohesiveness and just relationship-wise? How much better do you guys know each other now? Uh, a lot better. So at the beginning, uh, team meetings were based off of relationships and getting to know one each and every one of the coaches and players. And it's been nice to be able to finally have a more cohesive uh, groups. I mean, I... Yeah, it's nice to be. I mean, we're all more together. Sorry, <laughs> all on the same page. Yeah. And you talked you, you talked about it a second ago, but just piggybacking off of it. I mean, y'all y'all were learning virtually last year, installing a new offense. How beneficial is it to you know not only learn that, but then I mean, football's played on the field to to be out here on the field and, and learn it that way. How much better is it for you? I mean, there's a big difference between learning virtually and then being able to put your hands on people and move around and run drills and do cones and catch balls. I mean, you can't do that stuff when you're not here. I mean, you can, but it's just a lot different. So being here gives us a better advantage than last year did, I feel like. So. Do you have any individual, not, not like goals per se, but you know, last year was tough because you got injured and then um, you know now being back, do you have like kind of anything in mind as far as what you want to accomplish, I guess, this season? Uh, we want to win the Big 12. Just overall as a unit, nothing into, like, I guess it's a dumb question because I don't mean to say that you have a goal of, like, 10 touchdowns or anything, but just as a player, do you have any type of goals, anything you want to improve upon? We want to become a better offense. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, thanks, All right, Ben. Thanks, man. Ben. Appreciate it.